We're here at St. Bartholomew's in Maltby, one of the oldest sites of Christian worship in all of Rotherham. It gets its name from Bartholomew the Apostle, one of the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. This tower here was built in the 10th to 11th century and is considered one of the oldest buildings in all of Maltby still used for its original purpose. It's built in overlap architectural style, which refers to the crossing over period of late Saxon and early Norman style of churches. This is truly one of Maltby's and Rodham's hidden gems. You don't find many churches like this in Britain. And if you think the outside looks nice, wait until you see inside. I think when people look at their local church, they truly don't understand or comprehend just how much of an important part it plays in not only the local community, but also in their lives. The amount of weddings and christenings and special moments that have been captured within these walls is just staggering to think of. Over the hundreds of years, there have been hundreds upon hundreds of different events taking place here. I also find the inside of churches very beautiful, but also very telling of their heritage. For example, the tower here is one of the oldest buildings in all of Maltby. In fact, one of the oldest buildings in all of Rotherham. It's actually older than the nearby very famous religious site of Roach Abbey, which was once a very powerful and very important Cistercian monastery. But today, that stands in ruins, whereas St. Bart's has stood the test of time. Although the tower was built in the 1000s to the 1100s, the rest of the church was built in the 1400s in a style of religious architecture known as perpendicular. This style was unique to Britain and lasted from the 1300s to the 1500s, getting its name from the prominent vertical and horizontal lines. In 1859, however, St. Bart's was rebuilt again. This new building consists of a nave with a north and south aisle, a chancel with a north and south chapel, and a south porch. This new building was designed in neo-Gothic style, a type of architecture very trendy during the Victorian periods. This rebuilding was part of a nationwide campaign instigated by the Church of England in an attempt to boost dwindling church attendance. St. Bart's is located in quite a strange place though, wouldn't you agree? Usually, churches took up prominent places, not in the valley hidden away from public view. You see, the church was under two different lordships during the 11th century, that of Maltby and that of Hooton Levitt. Thus, this site may have been agreed upon, for it was close enough for both of them to attend. However, the site was also cleverly chosen for its proximity to the nearby source of running water, Maltby Beck. Maltby Beck is a stream that runs through the valley, Beck being a northern term for stream. Although Maltby is most famous for being a mining town, before coal mining, Maltby was predominantly a farming village. With a population of 500 at the beginning of the 1900s, St Bart's, would have been at the centre of the community, with the beck being vital for providing water for baptisms, farming and hygiene. The beck was also vital for providing Mobby with its own sport. Beck ball. The rules were pretty simple. You and your team had to get your ball from one side of the beck to the other. You started in one corner. You passed your ball to your teammates and then you had to get it to the opposite corner in order to score a point. This was supposedly played as early on as the 1200s, and a local myth emerged that Robin Hood once watched a game. It was revived in the late 1920s and the early 1930s. 
Local school children would hold ceremonies in order to open up the game. Teams were often made up of local civilians, ranging from firefighters to, to police people to teachers, the like. In 1930, it was actually kicked off by a Sheffield Wednesday player. And in 1932, they actually finished the match with a giant pillow fight. St Bart's was also the home for Maltby's own religion, the Malt Friskens. In the 1970s, a punk band was asked to play music here for mass. It was also here that the punk band found God. They began their own prayer group and indeed then gave Maltby its own religion. The word Malt Friskan is derived from the words Maltby and Franciscan. Franciscan gets his name from the prominent Roman Catholic Franciscan order, which in turn gets its name from the founder, St Francis of Assisi. However, not all has been harmonious here at St Bartholomew's. In 1939, a group of boys went on a rampage throughout Maltby and stole a communion vessel here worth £5 at the time. Communion vessels are containers used for specific purposes, such as a chalice, which is used for containing wine. This communion vessel was worth £5 in those days, which would have been worth £197 today. Despite what is just a petty crime, it is unmistakable just how big of a role St Bart's has played in this town. It hosts school events every Christmas and a coffee and a chat every Tuesday, just showing how much the people that work here care about their local neighbours. It's run by volunteers alongside the vicar, which is what a lot of local parish churches have to do nowadays. But nonetheless, it is still a fantastic example of overlap architecture and is one of the oldest sites of Christian worship and oldest buildings in all of Rotherham. It amazes me that after all these centuries, St Bart still plays a pivotal role, not just in the local community, but in local people's lives. <laughs>